Welcome to the Global Missions Podcast, a show for Christ followers who want to participate more effectively in God's work both at home and to the ends of the earth. Visit us at globalmissionspodcast.com to find show notes, resources, and previous episodes. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And now, here's your host, Rob Magwood, better known to many friends as Mags. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Global Missions Podcast. Just before we share today's episode, I'd like to ask you a quick question. As pandemic restrictions begin to lift in some areas, are you or your church ready to begin thinking again about short-term missions? If you are, there was a recent episode of the podcast, number 155, entitled Re-Engaging Short-Term Missions After a Pandemic Pause. It might be really helpful to you. We also want to mention another resource from the Global Missions Toolbox called the Go Journal. The Go Journal is a simple but effective tool to increase the fruit from short-term missions by lifting discipleship of the team members. The simple system is built around a physical journal that team members use before, during, and after their trip, and it's complemented by a leader's guide and a mentor's guide. You can find more information and download a free sampler at gojournal.org. Now, here's today's podcast conversation. Our guest today is Steve Addison, who began researching Christian movements back in the late 80s while planting a church in Australia. He is the author of four books on movements. He is a mentor to movement pioneers and seeks to be a catalyst for movements. Steve, I'm going to just pause right here and ask you, when you say movements, can you just share with us what do you mean and how do you define a movement? Well, in in a general term, a movement is any group of people committed to a common cause. But when we think of this in the terms of our mission, I'm looking specifically at movements that uh, multiply disciples and churches throughout the world. So, yeah, we we take that specific spotlight on uh, disciple-making movements. And when you say that you seek to be a catalyst, what do you mean by catalyst? Well, we often think of serving the Lord as our ministry, and and sometimes we sort of see, well, our our ministry is something for a leader. Others will help me do my ministry. A a movement's paradigm is it's not a movement until insiders, new believers, are spreading it and are winning and discipling others. So you you sort of flip it, and a, a movement catalyst, my role is to help people see that in the scriptures, to help them go a transition to a movement paradigm, which is what Jesus established, and then help them to become people who reach others who make disciples. So it's actually more about what's happening in the field and less about what is my individual ministry achieving and more about are we seeing progress towards disciples and churches that glorify God throughout the world? Oh, some great ideas there. Well, that's on being a catalyst for movements. Steve and Michelle are part of MOVE, a mission agency dedicated to multiplying disciples and churches. He's a podcaster and a speaker, and he recently authored a fifth book in 2021. That's what we'll be discussing today, a book entitled Your Part in God's Story, 40 Days from Genesis to Revelation. Steve, welcome to the program. Good to be with you, Max. Really appreciate it. We've connected all the way to Australia, Melbourne, where Steve and Michelle live. And uh, maybe, Steve, just give us a brief sketch, please, about your involvement in global missions over the years. Okay. Well, I was brought back to the Lord as a young man by a a guy who came to Christ uh, on the hippie trail in India. And so uh, about a a year or so later, I found myself uh, a bit of a dropout from university trying to sort out my faith. And I was in Europe with a ministry called Dillaram House. It's where I met Michelle. She's Australian, but I went to Amsterdam to meet her. And that's where I learned principles of movements, of making disciples. And then that got worked out when we uh, came back home to Australia. And uh, I've been involved in, um, you know, young adult ministry in a large church. And Michelle and I have planted a couple of churches. But most of our last, oh, probably almost 30 years now, has been leading a mission agency that is focused on um, how can we not only make disciples, but multiply disciples and healthy churches 
uh, not just here in Australia. There's a big need in Australia, just like Canada, but throughout the world. Well, today we get a chance to talk with Steve about some of the key ideas in his new book, Your Part in God's Story, 40 Days from Genesis to Revelation. Let's begin, Steve. Where did the idea for this book come from? Well, I don't know if you've had this experience where you're reading the scriptures and you, you sort of go to a familiar passage and say, that wasn't there before. You know, I've seen something fresh. And it's this period between Jesus' resurrection and the ascension and Pentecost. And here he, he's confronting a band of defeated and disillusioned disciples. And Luke tells us that in 40 days, he turns them into a missionary movement. And I thought, well, how did he do that? And for the first time, it just dawned on me. Well, he starts in the scriptures. He, he, it says he goes all the way from Genesis through to Malachi, and he's teaching them, you know, this is a risen Lord. I just want him to talk. And he's saying, get your Bible out. We're going to do a study. And he's showing them how the Messiah had to come and suffer and die rise again. And then he says, and this message, this gospel for repentance that leading to the forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed throughout the earth. So he's grounding, he's he's drawing them together as a missionary band and grounding them in the living word of God. And that's the basis then as, as he gives them the task and promises the presence and power of God through the Holy Spirit that's how he restores this band of disciples and sets them loose on, on the world. And then it hit me. Jesus rose from the dead. He's alive today. So he can do the same for me or any disciple. No matter where we're at in our discipleship, Jesus can do that same walk through the scriptures for us, uh, except now we can go from Genesis to Revelation. Right. And may our hearts burn within us, eh? Yes, yes. And and our, he said two things, hearts burn within us. And Luke says, and he opened their minds to understand. It's a wonderful thing. Well, if you were to distill it down to the main idea, the key idea that you would share with our listeners, how do you describe it all in a, a nutshell? I think this has got to be the starting place and the foundation of our whole lives, whether you, you use the book that I've written or you know, this is something we can trust the Lord Jesus to do for us. As we work through the scriptures, he will set our hearts on fire. He will fill our minds with understanding, but not just so we can pass his exam at the end of the course, because through his word and the Holy Spirit, we have a task to go make disciples of the nations. But the place to begin is actually not our energy, our commitment, you know, our contribution, our gifts. It's to begin like those defeated, disillusioned disciples with the risen Lord in his word, making clear what the task is, and then promising the presence and power of the Holy Spirit as we pursue it. So the big idea is the Lord Jesus wants to work that transformation in us. Well, you have provided us with a series of 40 studies. I wonder if you could share an example from those, Steve. You can pick which one. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I really like the story of Jonah, the reluctant missionary. God calls him to go to Nineveh, and he runs the other way. So I identify with Jonah. And some people say he's some sort of racist or something. He didn't like Assyrians. Well, the Assyrian rulers used to boast at how they they tortured men women and children after they had you know conquered a city these were these were monsters at least the the leadership and the culture and they're the great enemies of israel um so jonah runs the other way uh, he's terrified and the amazing thing is god pursues him you know the first person that needs to be converted is actually jonah and um, so he goes on this journey. God meets him in the in the storm and the belly of the fish. You know, the sailors get converted before Jonah does. You know, they give honor to God. And then he goes and fulfills the mission reluctantly. And, and the story ends outside of Nineveh, you know, with this incredible turning to God. And, and the Lord is still wanting to win Jonah over and said, look, you know, just think, there's 120,000 people here. And what about the cattle, the Lord says? You know, should I not have compassion on them? 
And so you hit, you're seeing the great heart of God, but then his patience with Jonah and, and the story ends. We don't know how it's resolved. It's left hanging like one of Jesus' parables, uh, challenging us to share in the heart of God and God's heart for this world. And, you know, so that, that had quite an impact on me just reading that story. And I know that you were asking questions regularly as you were going through these stories. Maybe just share with us some of those key questions that you were constantly asking as you were preparing these. Well, it's a, a same set of questions that ask, you know, what are we learning about God and his mission? So we've, God is at the center of this thing. And you can, you can journal this individually or some of the studies you can do in a group. And then what are we learning about how God calls and shapes people? So, you know, there's, there, there are those incredible calls throughout Scripture. But what's just as important is what well, we've called it your part in God's story, that there's this grand story of the, the Lord of salvation that the Lord is achieving. And yet what feels at times like our mundane life is part of that story. We have a part to play. So how does God shape his messengers? And then what does that say to us about how he's shaping and, and, and forming us? What do we need to do or how do we need to think differently in, in response to that truth and, and learning? So we're trying to get those dual themes of the character and mission of God, his, his great love for this world, and then how he calls and shapes each of us to play a part in his story. Well, I really appreciate how this book is not just information to kind of nod to, but you've designed it very intentionally so that we're examining our own hearts and um, it's transformational. It's allowing God's word really to, to uh, challenge our thinking. In one of the interviews in preparation, Steve, for this uh, discussion with you, I read a very courageous, authentic statement that you shared. It, you said this, I am by nature a glass half empty kind of person. You said, you know, sometimes you'll wrestle with a temptation to despair. You know, the world looks like this, the state of the church, the unfinished task. How did this book and writing this book change you? Well, the wonderful thing was to find myself in the scriptures, you know, whether it's a Jonah or there you have, we look at a couple of three times, I think, or twice at least with Abraham. And here he is offering up uh, this gift of God, his son Isaac on the altar and the struggle that he's been through. I mean, he contributed to some of the problems he faced, but in one sense, a very mundane life between these mountaintop encounters with God. And so long periods of life where he's just trying to sort out how do I deal with two wives and, and all of this sort of thing. And yet here in this, this key moment, you know, God's story is intersecting Abraham's story and he's offering up his son, the gift from God, believing that God could raise him from the dead because God would fulfill his promise. But there's a very real struggle going on there for Abraham and Sarah. And so to realize, you know, Jonah's struggle or Paul's struggle, or Peter's struggle, or Isaiah's struggle, you know, we can find ourselves in that. And that in one sense is the glass half empty. It's hard. <laughs> you know, Jesus shows it, it's hard. But in another sense, in our weakness, not in our sin, but in our weakness, God is revealing his glory as we trust him. You know, this treasure is in earthen vessels. So our story is intersecting his story and we're being changed as a result. And that's why Paul could say it's, you know, he's it's, it's not just making a theological statement. He's making an experiential statement. It's all of grace. This is a work of God. And Yet the, the, the magnificent nature of God that he would draw us in to this great story of salvation and ask us to play a part. Incredible. Well, in just a moment, we're going to ask Steve to share particularly how he sees this book being helpful to missions committees and church leaders. Of course, that's a main interest, Steve, of our audience as we, we look to serve and support mission workers. Steve's got some specific and practical ways that you might use this book. Just before we get to that part of the conversation, We'd like to share with you this missions resource. We hope it'll be helpful to you and your church. For South America Mission, it's simple. Let the church be the church. For over a century, 
South American Mission has supported the local church in its effort to embody the kingdom of God and offer others the redemptive hope of the gospel. Join our effort through local leadership and discipleship-based ministry to help the local church flourish and demonstrate God's love and mercy to His people in South America. Visit SouthAmericaMission.org to learn more. And now, back to today's conversation. We're back with Steve Addison, author of the book, Your Part in God's Story, 40 Days from Genesis to Revelation. Steve, many of the listeners in our audience are serving in a local church, and many of them are part of missions committees. People who are often in a volunteer role, they want to do a great job of global missions from their church. I'm wondering, what are some of the ways that your book could be helpful to them and to other church leaders? Well, I think anyone with a heart for missions that that want to see disciples made and this world reached, it gives you a a biblical foundation and you can set aside uh, 40 days, they don't have to be consecutive days, and work through that individually, say on the missions committee. But also, um, if you want to have, this is a great tool to to influence others who have a growing interest in missions just to to get them, they can do this individually or once a week they can come together as a group. It's all designed around self-discovery in the scriptures. And one of the most important things is that our calling in life is grounded in God's word, but also the work of the risen Lord and the Holy Spirit in us through his word to sort of build that foundation in us that not just gets us to a calling, but then that's the foundation we take with us in, into the rest of our lives and service. And so it's a, a resource for anyone who really wants to find their part in God's story, but that would be the use for a missions committee or a pastor who even wants to take some of the studies and, and make that a focus Sunday to Sunday, but encourage then his people to be on that journey individually during the week. Well, we say to our mobilizers, uh, mobilization coaches, really we're seeking to disciple people into the Lordship of Christ founded on God's word. And this is a resource that would be very uh, complementary to that. Like you said, self-discovery based on God's word and trusting God by his Holy Spirit to be uh, using all of that and directing our steps. Have you seen it used with young adults? You mentioned a young adult ministry before. Is this for young adults especially? Is it for older adults um, who might make good use of this? Look, I I would want to even hope that, you know, uh, teens, you know, if you're wanting to inspire some some young, young people around their calling in life, but we've seen it used right across the board with different age groups, even with workers who are currently on the field and more sort of in their later 20s and 30s, it's sort of a refresher course in the foundations of why we do what we do, getting that big picture sense of, of what God is, is on about. You know, if I was taking a missions trip away for a week or two somewhere in the world or somewhere in, in North America, I'd say, well, let's start reading it together before we go and let's make this our you know, devotional each day as we go. So that there's an intersection between, you know, being in the field and at the same time reflecting on what we're doing. Very good ideas to practically engage with this material. We will include a link to your part in God's story in the show notes. Familiar listeners will know you can find those show notes at globalmissionspodcast.com. Steve, I wonder if you have other resources that you would recommend to be alongside your book and that would be helpful in this same uh, conversation? Well, if people want to go to movements.net, there are a lot of, well, all the references to the other books that have the biblical foundations, but are going to help more, more in the area of practically what do we need to do next? You know, what's best practice as we pursue multiplying movements of disciples and churches around the world? I think the other thing, and they'll they'll find links there to practical training. The other thing I would say, as you get this foundation, um, especially coming out of the 40 days from Genesis to Revelation, start looking for best practice places where you can get trained in practical skills. 
Because remember, Jesus gives them the 40 days, but that's sandwiched between an awful lot of hands-on ministry and action. So definitely dive into the word, do that in a group, do that individually. But as that call is, is, is strengthening, it doesn't have to be a call to overseas or even a call to, to be full-time, just a call to make disciples. Find some best practice places where you can get simple training to help you engage in sharing the gospel and making disciples. One of the networks, you know, I, it's not an organization, but there's a network called No Place Left. I know they're in Canada and they'll be offering training. There are other similar type groups around uh, disciple making movements training that people should be able to find. Well, some great resources there. We will include those in the show notes. And the podcast, of course, is part of the Global Missions Toolbox that would be consistent with some of the resources that Steve has mentioned as well. And we invite you, of course, to visit there and to look through the resources that might be helpful either to you on a missions committee or just if you have a heart for missions and you want to learn more about the world and how God might use you there. But Steve, especially for you, if our listeners would like to follow up with you, they might like to get in contact with you. How could they do that? Well, they can uh, visit movements.net and communicate to me through that website, or they can email me at steve.addison at movenetwork.org. And we'll include that also in the show notes so that if you'd like to follow up, you'll have that easy reference there. Steve, just before we close, I have a favorite question I like to pose to our guests. If you could imagine yourself standing in front of a group of church leaders, perhaps comprised of missions committee members and faithful pastors who really do want their churches to engage in the Great Commission, what would you like to say to them? I'd say to rediscover the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus and get in touch with what he did and then what the risen Lord continues to do in the book of Acts through the Holy Spirit and his dynamic word and through ordinary people. And you'll soon discover, you know, there are churches like the one at, uh, you know, Jerusalem or at, in Antioch or in Ephesus. They weren't just local churches. They were reaching their city and their whole region in depth. And they were playing a part, a partnership role with missionary bands that were going to the ends of the earth. And so reimagine, not, not from some book I've read or whatever, the Gospels and Acts and the Epistles, and see, well, what would it look like for us to be a Great Commission church? Not just sending to faraway places, but even in our own backyard. What would it look like to both reach our region, our city in depth, and at the same time, partner with others to send uh, folk to the ends of the earth, because these are exciting days. They are indeed. Steve Addison, thank you so much for the time spent with us and with our audience today. And may the Lord bless you as you continue, not only with your writing and with this particular book, your part in God's story, but with the MOVE agency. May the Lord bless you. Thank you very much, Mags. It's been good to be with you. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's conversation with Steve. If you're listening to this episode in the summer of 2021, remember to stop by the website globalmissionstoolbox.com to get updates on our upcoming launch. If you're listening at some point in the future, we invite you to stop by and check out the library of resources assembled for everyone who wants to do an excellent job of global missions. Today's episode is brought to you by the Global Missions Toolbox and is produced by Send International in collaboration with other like-minded agencies. On behalf of our team, thanks for listening. Join us again in two weeks when we'll continue to explore this grand adventure of being Christ's witnesses to the ends of the earth.